Hey friends, happy Thursday. Um, okay, so yesterday we did a science experiment for Wonder-Filled Wednesday. Thursdays are going to be Bible Story Day, okay? So let's do some songs, we'll do our Bible verse, and then I've got the next part of Moses' story that we started last week. Okay, so let's start. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Hey, boom, boom. Good job. I sure miss, I miss Mr. Russ, don't you? I miss the boom, boom. All right. This is one we haven't done in a while, but I think you know it. And it goes like this. He invites us into his banqueting table. His banner over us is love. He invites us into his banqueting table. His banner over us is love. He invites us into his banqueting table. His banner over us is love. His banner over us is love. He is the vine and we are the branches. His banner over us is love. He is the vine and we are the branches. His banner over us is love. He is the vine and we are the branches. His banner over us is love. His banner over us is love. There's one way to peace through the power of the cross. His banner over us is love. Mm. There's one way to peace through the power of the cross. His banner over us is love. <laughs> There's one way to peace through the power of the cross. His banner over us is love. His banner over us is love. Good job. It's been a while since we have sung that one. All right. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. All right, one hand up and one hand down. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. All right, the hand that's up, put it on your head. Oh wait, your big old blockhead. The hand that's down, put it on your big old belly. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Okay, here we go. Touch your nose, reach around in front, and touch your ear. Be careful. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Good job. Ooh, made my nose itch. Awesome. All right. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, do the Adam. You're an elephant, you're a giraffe, and you're a kangaroo. If you're happy and you know it, do the Adam. You're an elephant, you're a giraffe, and you're a kangaroo. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do the Adam. You're an elephant, you're a giraffe, and you're a kangaroo. If you're happy and you know it, do the Noah, two, four, six, eight, P-U. If you're happy and you know it, do the Noah, two, four, six, eight, P-U. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do the Noah, two, 
four, six, eight, P, U. If you're happy and you know it, do the Daniel. Dear God, don't let the lions eat me. If you're happy and you know it, do the Daniel. Dear God, don't let the lions eat me. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do the Daniel. Dear God, don't let the lions eat me. If you're happy and you know it, do the Moses. Follow me across the sea. If you're happy and you know it, do the Moses. Follow me across the sea. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do the Moses. Follow me across the sea. If you're happy and you know it, do the Joshua. Be strong, be brave, be fearless. If you're happy and you know it, do the Joshua. Be strong, be brave, be fearless. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do the Joshua. Be strong, be brave, oops, be brave, be fearless. Sorry about that. Good job. Let's do Samson. If you're happy and you know it, do the Samson. I am the strongest man. If you're happy and you know it, do the Samson. I am the strongest man. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do the Samson. I am the strongest man. Oh, Delilah. If you're happy and you know it, do Delilah. What makes you so strong? If you're happy and you know it, do Delilah. What makes you so strong? If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do Delilah. What makes you so strong? Good job. I was getting a little mixed up on some of my verses. Okay, let's do the books of the Bible. How about that? The Old Testament. Where is Miss Dell? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. That's all the first and seconds. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job. Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes and the Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel and Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Great job. Well, let's look at our memory verse today. Got to flip a few pages. Oh, wait, it's not in that book. <laughs> I haven't put it in there yet. It's right here. Ah! And we have one more week. We have this week and next week. And then for the end of May, we will just, I might come up with a new one. I didn't have one. It was going to be a review if we were at school. But you know what? I might come up with a new verse for May that we can practice together. All right, let's do this one together. I press on, I press on toward the goal, toward the goal to win the prize, to win the prize. Let's do it all together. I press on towards the goal to win the prize. And it's from Philippians 3 verse 14. Now remember, this was part of a letter that Paul wrote. Now Paul was going around and visiting different cities, and he couldn't get to this city in Philippi because remember, he was where? At the grocery store? No. At the library? No. I know, he was at the zoo. No, he wasn't at the zoo. He was in prison. Yeah. Everybody go, dun, dun, dun. That's not good for Paul. But while he was there, he wrote letters to different cities that he had visited. And this was part of his letter that he wrote to the people in Philippi. Remember that? We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. And the prize that they're working towards is heaven. Okay? So there was a lot of, remember, there were a lot of hard things that they were going through. They could have given up. But if they gave up working towards that, they would not get towards their goal of heaven and telling people about heaven and Jesus and all of that wonderful information and message about what God does for us. So Paul was telling them, don't quit, don't give up. 
And I think that's very true for us today. We don't want to give up. We don't want to quit. We have things that we need to work towards. We have things to work towards in school and at home. But the most important thing is our relationship with God and how we work on that. And we are that's our goal that we're working on is becoming closer and closer to him. And then one day we'll be with him in heaven. How awesome is that? Well, if you think back to last week, we were talking about Moses, okay? Now, we didn't do the very first part of Moses' story, but we mentioned it when we talked about him being put in the river in the basket. He grew up in Pharaoh's uh, home, and um, and then, let's see, last week we talked about how God came to Moses in the form of a burning bush, and was telling Moses, hey, I need you to do something really important. But Moses was like, oh, I can't do that. I don't talk to people very good. I'm tongue-tied. I don't speak well. And he goes, it's okay. I'm going to be with you. And so he goes through that. So there's part of the, part of the next story is Moses going to um, Pharaoh and saying, hey, you've got to let people, God's people go. You know what? Actually, let's just do that part. I was going to skip that, but this is a neat part of the story. So this part of Moses' journey is leading him back to Egypt where the Pharaoh has all of the Israelites, which are God's people, and he's holding them captive. He's not letting them go. So here is Moses going back. Okay, now the title of this little story in this book of the Bible is called, I've had it, just scram, get out of this land. And this part of Moses' story comes out of the book of Exodus. Remember, we just sang it, Genesis, Exodus. That's the name of the book that this part of the story comes from. Um, so Moses said, let God's people go. And the king said, no. Yes, said Moses. No, said the king. No, no, no. The king was as stubborn as a tin pack of mules, and he wanted nothing to do with God's rules. He wanted God's people to work as his slaves. He would keep them until they fell into their graves. He was never going to let them go. Get to work, yelled the king. Don't stop for a thing. No stopping, no dropping, no flopping. Get hopping. They worked in the sun, but it wasn't much fun. And the king kept yelling, just work, work, work. That terrible king was a jerk, jerk, jerk. No matter what Moses said, the king would not listen. So you can imagine in this part of the story, Moses goes and says, hey, I want you got to let the people go. And Pharaoh says, no. Nope. Come on, Pharaoh, you got to do it. No. Nope. So God began another grand plan. He made all kinds of bad things happen in the, to the people of Egypt. There was blood in the water, killing their fishes. Frogs jumping into their cereal dishes. Lice in their hair, little flies that would bite. Cattle just dropping down dead in the night. Boils on the people and hail on their heads. Locusts that eat all their fine flower beds. Darkness, three days without one bit of light. And then God sent death to each house one night. Now, during all of these plagues, they were called plagues. All these terrible things were happening. Moses kept going to Pharaoh and he would say, okay, you can let him go. Mm, nope, I changed my mind. And then God would send another plague. And Pharaoh would say, okay, you can take him. Get him out of here. Uh, nope, I changed my mind. And then God would send another plague. It took 10 plagues for Pharaoh to finally get wise and that was after a person died in each house in Egypt. So finally, the Egyptian people cried so loudly that the king got up in the middle of the night and called Moses and Aaron to his house. Now remember, Aaron had gone with Moses because Moses was a good speaker. So Aaron was the one that would do the talking. In a burst of anger, the king yelled, Go! Just go! He hollered, Yes! Go, go, go. I've had it. Your God has made himself clear. Take your people and scram. Get out of here. And wow, did they go. Now, the next part of the story I'll read next week. Now, what if Moses had given up 
and quit going to Pharaoh to say, hey, you gotta let people, God's people go. God's plan would have had to have changed or God would have had to find a different way. But because Moses didn't quit and he kept pressing on, he kept working and kept moving forward because he knew God was going to fix this. He knew God was going to take care of his people. It took longer than Moses probably would have liked it to, but thankfully Moses didn't quit. Thankfully Moses kept pressing on towards the goal of using God to get God's people out of Egypt. Now, you would like to think that Pharaoh finally made the decision and let the Israelites go away and that would be the end of it. Hmm. Some people are kind of thick-headed and they don't they don't learn very quickly. So next week we're going to we're going to see the rest of the story of of Moses getting the children of Israel out of Egypt and then that silly old Pharaoh. He just wasn't very smart. And we'll see next week what happens with that. You guys are great listeners. You know, you might be eating lunch or a snack or something else while you're watching this. But I hope that you can listen really well. And hopefully you can learn just a little bit more about God's stories and how he's been working from the very beginning to lay out this plan for us. I think it's really neat to be able to go back and look at these stories and see how we can use them in our life and how we can be like Moses and do hard things that we think we can't do. Um, we can be like Moses and not quit. We can be like Paul and we can reach out to people and encourage them. And um, even when things are tough, and I know that you guys are doing that, and I'm so proud of you, and I miss you a whole lot. Um, let's finish up with our song, um, We Love You, Lord, because, oh my goodness, I just love it so much, and I want to share that with you, and I want us to be able to do that together, even though we're not side by side. You can do it at your house, and I'm going to do it at my house, and we'll sing it together, okay? We love you, Lord. You are amazing. We love you, Lord, for all that you are. We love you, Lord. Walk right beside us. Protect us and guide us till we meet again. And boys and girls, I can't wait till I get to see you again. I don't know when it'll be. I think it'll be soon, but we'll see. But I miss you. And just remember, I love you. Your teachers love you. Your mommy and daddy love you for sure. And But who loves you most of all? God does. Oh, and guess who was sitting in my lap the whole time? Hi! It's Willis. Hi, Willis. You say hi to all my friends. I think he likes the story time. <laughs> and he didn't even make a peep. All right. Bye, friends. Have a great rest of the day.